Hello everyone, welcome to our visionary classes. Okay, so today's lecture series on the lecture 2 of the environmental statistic that is on the measure of central tendency. Okay, so before I would like to start my lecture series, I would like to request you to subscribe our channel and contact us for the latest study material on this number and if you want you can join our regular online classes also. Okay, so what is central tendency? Okay, let's start with the central tendency. What is central tendency? An average value that typically represents a set of data. As we know, we are actually doing in research, we are collecting the data and we are taking a sample that is the true representation of the data to find some research. Okay, so the average value that typically represents a set of data which tends to lie centrally with a set of data arranged according to the magnitude. Okay, so data should be arranged first in a magnitude way. Okay. Either ascending or descending, you can arrange it any way, or you can do it uh, like you can do it uh, with the respect to your magnitude. As I discussed, that magnitude should be increasing or magnitude should be decreasing. Okay, but the data set will be lying centrally. Okay, this tendency, as we told that it is a central tendency, it should lie near to the center of the data. Okay, so the central tendency the first we know that it is a kind of average okay those averages are divided into two parts the first average is the mathematical average the second average is the positional average the mathematical average is the mean okay that mean is again divided into three parts that is the arithmetic mean geometric mean harmonic mean okay again the positional average is divided into median mode and quartile okay how this we know that which is a positional average and which is a mathematical average okay where you can perform the arithmetic operation okay that give rise to your what mathematical average while the positional average is fixed ah, it lies on the so what does we know about the arithmetic mean? Let us discuss about the arithmetic mean. Okay, so arithmetic mean we can consider it can be done through various ways but we will discuss here direct and assumed mean method. Okay, there are some also where we use discrete data for that we use frequency to calculate the our mean. Okay, so in the arithmetic mean as we know the direct method says that we have a set of n numbers that is x1, x2, x3 up to xn. Then its am is denoted by x1, x2, x3 dot 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 xn means it is added means sum of all the numbers that we have divided by the number of observation that is the n it give rise to direct method arithmetic mean. Okay, so here you can see there is a question that calculate the arithmetic frame from the data showing the students number in an economic test that is 40, 50, 55, 78, 50. Okay, so you should use this kind of data. Actually the question came where some data is missing and your mean is given. So you should have to know that how to calculate this arithmetic mean to answer some questions coming in the exam. Okay, now the second method is the assumed mean method okay if the number of observation in data is more or the figure are large it is difficult to compute the arithmetic mean by direct method so it is very difficult to compute the mean by direct method while the computation can be made easier by assuming the mean method okay so first of all we what we do that we arrange the data then we assume the mean then we have numbers of x individual observation then we have total number of observation we just find the deviation okay so the formula give rise to that arithmetic mean from the assumed mean method will be a plus summation of the deviation divided by total number of n okay so this is the assumed mean method to calculate the arithmetic mean so okay you should remember these two okay for the Okay, so here you can see there is a diagram that showing that different heights in the inches and we have a direct mean method where we get this answer is in the this position. So you can see the mean actually tends to lie in the center of the data set. Okay, 
so there are some limitation in the arithmetic mean what does this limitations are you should remember the values in am depends on each and every value of data set okay where it is large or small which will affect the mean if it is missed out in this age okay so if we remove this 54 and 67 from this data set it will affect it will definitely affect the mean okay so this is very much variable if the datas are missing in the what data set okay so as it goes to every values to calculate the mean okay so this is at the limitation this is the first limitation the second limitation is that am is not always a good measure of central tendency because it only provides the characteristics value in the sense of indicating where most of the values lies okay it does not give the actual characteristics of each data okay it only gives the characteristics value that all the data is tending towards the mean value okay then we have that there is a property called that is the algebraic sum of the deviation of a set of numbers for the arithmetic mean is always zero okay so this is a property okay this is not a limitation this is a property okay so this is the property you should remember this this is a property okay so now in exam this is also coming because this is very important term that is the combined mean okay as most of are getting afraid of seeing this combined mean but this is nothing you should remember that the combined mean is actually that number of observations in the group one into number of arithmetic mean of the group one plus number of observation in the group 2 into arithmetic mean of the group 2 whole divided by number of observation in group 1 plus number of observation in group 2 okay so this is very simple this is not very tough it, let us consider that we have a set 1 with n1 number of data set okay and with a mean x1 okay so we know x1 will be sum 1 divided by n1 okay then sum 1 will be x1 into n1 okay similarly we have n2 data set and x2 mean okay then the sum 2 will be your x2 into n2 okay so if we consider the total elements as a whole so what we will answer that the sum arithmetic sum of all the data set of some set 1 and set 2 equal to sum 1 sum 2 divided by n1 plus n2 this is the total mean so combined mean is nothing but it is the combination of the two data sets okay so here we can get that is x1 into n1 okay x you will substitute this x1 in this position and this is x2 in this position so this is not a difficult thing but you should remember the basic concept so that you can derive this combined mean formula for your exam so don't get get afraid while it comes in exam okay now moving on to the geometric mean okay there is one more type of mean that is the geometric mean okay in the geometric mean of g a set of n positive in numbers that is x1 x2 x3 xn is the nth root product of the numbers okay so what does it mean let us see if you product the sum product all the elements then you take nth root of it then it will give rise to geometric mean similarly the harmonic mean is the reciprocal of x1 x2 x3 up to xn and arithmetic mean of this number is divided by the 1 upon 1 it is divided so it will give rise to your harmonic mean okay so this is very easy because these are formula based mean so you should remember this okay but these are mathematical mean because this arithmetic operations can be performed in this like here you can perform multiplication here you can perform addition and in the normal mean also you can perform addition 
that's why these are the arithmetic mean questions okay so there is a relation if all the observations are equal then arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean will be same if all the observations are unequal then arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean will be different let us see with some example about this okay so if we consider there is 5 5 and 5 okay so what will be the answer let us see 5 plus 5 plus 5 by 3 so this will give rise to 5 only okay this is am okay suppose gm let us consider the gm okay it will be 3 root over 5 into 5 into 5 okay that is 5 only because it will be 5 to the power 3 then root over of 1 by 3 that will be 5 only okay now come to harmonic mean 1 upon 5 1 upon 5 and 1 upon 5 okay that will give rise to 3 1 by 5 into n this is n this is n okay this is also 3 so it will also give rise to 3 3 will be cutting out here and it will give rise to 5 only so here we can see that am gm and hm all are equal okay so this is the condition you should remember it moving on to the positional average this is the median okay that refers to the medial value of the distribution okay so first of all we have to arrange the data in the decreasing order first to get it the answer you can arrange it in increasing also so for odd number of observation we have a formula that is median value will be n plus 1 upon 2 to observation okay that numbers observation is the our median for even number it is n plus n divided by 2 plus n plus divided by 2 plus 1th observation the and whole divided by 2 will give rise to your what even number median okay so suppose we consider the first one that is 24 11 16 9 14 21 in a distribution okay so you will arrange it in ascending order okay then the number of observation is 6 and the number of objection is 6 so it is even in number so you should write it as n by 2th term plus n by 2 plus 1th term upon 2 so total term will be 3rd term plus 4th divided by 2 that is 14 by plus 16 divided by 2 that the answer will be 15 so the median value of this data will be 15 whether it is coming in this data or not but the median value will be 15 okay this is the 15 okay so there are some merit that extreme values has no effect on the median okay so the last value and the La extreme last okay the last on from the first and the last from the last will have no effect on the median okay now most appropriate average in dealing with the qualitative data okay it will not destroy the quality of a data because suppose we have a extreme values effect so what will happen if some data will be removed it will affect the median okay while median is a term that only consider that particular position so it has no effect of the extreme values data while the limitation is that for calculating median it is necessary to arrange the data that is a big task okay since its positional average its value is not determined by each and every objection that is also the demerit of the median values now come to Okay, the mode or the modal value is the value in the series of observation which occurs with the greatest frequency. Okay, the most occurring value. Okay, the merit is that not affected by the extreme values. Okay, and can be used for the qualitative data. Okay, this is also the merit of the mode. Okay, now we have three terms that is quartile, decile and percentile. Okay, a set of data is arranged in the order of magnitude, the middle value or the arithmetic mean of the two middle values that divide the set into two equal parts is called as median. So by extending this idea, we can think that those values which divide the set into four equal parts 
are called as what quartiles okay so these are called quartiles these are quartiles okay these are quartiles if you divide it to four equal sets okay these values are denoted by q1 n by 4 q2 2 n by 4 q3 3 n by 4 are called the first second and third quartile okay respectively the value of q2 is being observed equal to the median value okay similarly the values that divides the data into 10 equal parts are called decide are denoted by d1 d2 d up to d9 okay while the values dividing the data into 100 equal parts are called percentile that are denoted by p1 p2 up to p99 okay these are the basic definitions of the quartile decile and the okay now moving on to some example that we will deal in the percentile part okay a value of observation data sets are given that is 2 2 3 4 5 6 this data is given like this okay so question is what is the percentile ranking of the 10 okay so 10 is situated at the position of 16 okay the total number of, of observation is 20 okay so 16 by 20 into 100 is equal to 80 percent so percentile rank of 10 will be 80 okay now the compute the quartile for the data set okay so the quartile key 1 will be n plus 1 upon fourth term okay that will give rise to 2.7 fifth term the second term plus 3 by 4 third term minus second term will give rise to your first quartile that is 9.5 okay this is the formula okay the second term okay as it is given what 2.75 so 2.75 means the second term plus 0.75 means it is 3 by 4 okay 0.75 means it is 3 by 4 3 by 4 and the value lies between because it is given 2.75 so the value will be lying between second and the third part so that's why 0 0.75 will give rise to 3 by 4 third minus second term will be our coming in third item minus second item okay this is the reason we are using 3 by 4 here now in the third question we should arrange this in the ascending order and the third decile formula is 3 into n by plus 1 upon 10 as we already discussed this is the formula of the decile because it is third decile you should multiply with 3 as it is given n is 9 so your n plus 1 term will be 10 10 it will cut out and the third value as we know it is 3 so this is the answer i hope you understand all these things have a nice day